Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Jennifer Brown, President and CEO of the Alliance for Children's Rights. Jen has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. Like, thank you, Jen, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So it all starts with children, right? Of course. So talk about children's rights and the Alliance for Children's Rights. How do you, uh, how do you pursue your mission to make this world a more just society for children? We represent kids um, who, for the most part, are recovering from abuse, neglect, or abandonment. So those are kids who are typically in the foster care system, um, and some of them are living with legal guardians. And those kids really need a voice, and that's where the Alliance steps in. And the abuse, the neglect, it can take a lot of different forms. Sure. So talk about what you encounter in the course of your work. We really step in once kids cannot stay safely at home with a parent. When kids are removed from their parents, it's a very serious step. And we leave that to the agencies and the courts in, here in Los Angeles, it's the dependency court, that really makes those determinations. So the determinations are made first. Correct. And then you step in once the determination has been made. Correct. Typically, it's a court deciding that. Sometimes mm -hmm. a parent may decide that he or she really doesn't feel competent to take care but of a child. even then the court is involved in that. Not case. always. Sometimes, actually, a parent can go to a relative. We've had plenty oh, of clients yes. who go to their moms or their dads or a trusted friend and says, I'm having mental health issues, I'm having substance abuse issues, can you please take care of my child? And in those cases, sometimes the adult needs to step in and become the guardian of that child to get the child enrolled in school, to get the child the medical care that the child needs um, so that you have some authority to raise that child well. And in that case, we step in and help as well. So what kind of, of help do you provide? The way the Alliance steps in is to provide those services that children need in a very holistic way to make sure that that child is growing up in a healthy and stable way. So we provide a whole range of services that hopefully work together to provide all of the supports that the child needs. There are court appointed lawyers who represent those children in dependency court and also in the probate court. And they speak for the child. They're they not speaking for the parent. They're not speaking for the system. Correct. They're speaking for the child. Correct. And then the Alliance steps in to provide all of those other services that that child needs to stay stable. So if the child needs special education in school, we will advocate for that child to get a special education plan. If a very young child needs early interventions, because we know that babies have windows of opportunity to make a difference in the rest of that child's life, if the child gets the right kind of therapies between the ages of zero and five, and sometimes even zero and three, we will step in and advocate to make sure that that toddler or infant even gets those services. And sometimes the non-parent, and that can be a relative, it can be a friend, it can be someone who steps up to be a foster caregiver, that person oftentimes needs professional expertise and help. With a very young child, it may mean occupational therapy, which always makes me smile because you know you don't think of a two-year-old having an occupation, but that child may need help learning to walk. Right. Right, that child may need behavioral therapy. That child may need speech therapy. And we know that there are milestones that children should be hitting that sometimes they're not and they need the, that extra support. And making that difference will change that child's trajectory for the future. And it's one of the great things about working with kids. So the competencies involved are very diverse. It is not possible for one organization to have all the competencies required. So talk about how you provide these services both directly and in association with partners and the state. Absolutely. So the Alliance began with an adoption program. As so many of these organizations did. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, our adoption program was designed to assist families adopting children out of foster care, mm -hmm. to provide those children with permanent loving homes. There was a delay in the number of cases that could be heard in court. And people were having to wait five, six, or even seven years, literally, right. to get an adoption completed. 
So we stepped in and decided this was something that we wanted to lift. Now we do four adoption days every year where we do adoptions in every courtroom, back to back all afternoon. This month we did an adoption day where 156 children were adopted in one afternoon out of foster care. We're the only organization here that does adoptions of young people out of foster care who are technically adults. They're young people in extended foster care between the ages of 18 and 21 but you don't stop wanting a family or needing a family, and those are really special adoptions. And what's really important to understand is just because these adoptions are happen, happening expeditiously, the children are not receiving short shrift. This is really about making the system work. Sure, of course. And so the adoption piece is, is one piece of making the system work, and we collaborate with the court to do that. We, are, we partner with Public Council, another nonprofit organization, with DCFS, the Department of Child and Family Services, with the court, with the children's uh, attorneys at uh, the Children's Law Center. So this is a collaboration here in Los Angeles County to help these children transition to permanent homes. It's really a, a phenomenal undertaking and um, it's a great day because the court, which is typically the scene of a lot of difficulty, right, of a lot of challenging decisions, becomes a scene of happiness and relief and real joy for these kids and for their families. We also realized, however, that once kids were adopted, they needed other supports to keep the whole family stable. So we grew our programs in response to those needs. How are you funded, uh, given the fact that you are providing so many different services to people without means and, and uh, contributed to revenue is very difficult to come by? Um, how do you keep the doors open? Great question. We are so wonderfully supported um, in several ways. Um, about a half of our revenue comes from foundations, from private philanthropy, and our philanthropic partners are tremendous. Um, they are longtime supporters, many of them, and they really work with us hand in hand to ensure that this work keeps going. Um, we also have the rest of our budget divided equally between uh, our events, which our board does a phenomenal job to help us uh, create, and people really step up at those events to donate to the Alliance every year. And then from corporate and individual donations from folks who really care about making a difference for children. In terms of getting the word out and ensuring that you are connected to the appropriate uh, individuals, whether they're funders or, uh, or uh, people who are part of your ecosystem, how does that work? We have a network around Los Angeles County of a lot of partners with whom we work. Um, and it's, it's more than just awareness, which is wonderful. We actually partner together. Um, one of the things that we do based on the cases that we see come in the door, and that could be in education, in public benefits, in healthcare, in services for teens. Once we see a systemic problem, when we see the same problem recurring and recurring again, we also have a policy team that then attempts to reform the system to meet those needs for even the children we never meet. So in our work to help change systems in a positive way, we partner with many people in the, in the child welfare space. We partner with all kinds of people up and down the state and in doing that work together, we get to know each other and get to, to make changes that really impact everybody's clients. So you're out there proactively scanning the horizons for sources of, of problems for children. You and, know. <laughs> and you're interacting with, with that ecosystem on a continual basis. Sure, and, and almost less than scanning, we're really listening. We're listening to our clients, we're listening to their caregivers, we're listening to relatives, and that's where we're finding out what's really going on on the ground. So that when we go to Sacramento, or we go to the County of Los Angeles, and we say, here's something that we really need to address, we know that it's affecting people and that the change we're proposing is gonna really improve things on the ground. Now, you've served uh, over 150,000 children? We have. Over the, over the last years, and then uh, you provide uh, uh, free legal services and advocacy. So talk about those free legal services. Sure. 
So for children whose interests need to be represented in a legal system, mm -hmm. because they already are in a legal system by virtue of being in the foster care system, um, they often need an advocate. One place that we can help is to protect the rights that we know they have. So we advocate for kids who are entitled to public benefits and may be wrongly assessed so that they're not getting the level of support that they need if they have disabilities. About 60% of our clients have some sort of disability um, and many of those children are entitled to special supports. It's a big system. There are many, many children in the foster care system right now. There are more than 30,000 kids in foster care in LA County. So we sometimes need to step in and we have lawyers and, and advocates who will represent the interests of those children who really need someone to pay attention and say, what is the right level of care that you need? What are the supports to which you're entitled? And the attorneys, are they all on staff or are they do they have other type of relationships with you? So we have staff attorneys and we also have an enormous network of attorneys who volunteer their time. And it's part of what makes the Alliance an Alliance. About 600 pro bono lawyers volunteer their time for us. They help us with adoptions. We could never get all of those adoptions done on adoption day without all of those firms. They represent uh, our clients in legal guardianships. They represent our clients with school districts where it might take back going to the school district one or two or 10 times to get an appropriate individual education plan for a child with special needs. They also help sort out consumer fraud problems that many of our teen clients face. And what could be more important to our future to take these children, to take these, these bundles of potential and ensure that they feel safe and, and help them to grow? That is the function of, uh, of American society, really, when it comes right down to it. It's really true. It's really true. And it's phenomenal when you think about that, because if you can change the life of a child, it means you have made all the difference in the world for that child. But you also have changed the way that that child may parent and raise a family. Yes. And so you literally are changing the future, one person at a time. Jennifer Brown, thank you so much for describing the work of the Alliance for Children's Rights, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.